With 3GPP release 15 being finalized as we speak, the standardization of 5G is forging ahead. Colin, where are we in regards to this, the development of 5G and the standards process? Where, where are we today exactly? I think, like you said, right, we tried to rush out release 15, December last year, we had a first drop, and but then the rest of people really having to wrap everything up. I'm hoping that this week is it. But believe it or not, people already start working on release 16. You are uh, see some of the modeling, that, that work is really moving forward. But the interesting thing is standards or not, people have been doing uh, 5G trials and even some early deployment. Like in my backyard in Dallas, there's already uh, sites up and running, running uh, fixed wireless access. Uh, you know, we have operators in the US announcing, and I heard that, didn't we just had a, a auctions uh, of Spectrums here in the UK? So That's things right. are really moving forward. Yeah. So, so what's Intel's strategy? What, how does Intel perceive 5G and how, how does it all fit in with, with your roadmap? It's, it's funny you ask. We, we talked about this um, quite a bit at the beginning. We always said 5G for us is way more than air interface. Mm. It is, we'll have the network I implication, but the implication goes far beyond that. So we really looked at it from an end-to-end -end perspective. I was just looking, thinking, Gosh, 5G is probably the first wireless technology that, that I can remember. There are as many people working to enable it, mm. and the same equal, maybe even more people to figure out what to do with it. So, so that makes it interesting that, the, so when we look at this, this is really a data-centric technology. For the first time, now you have compute and communication together. So it makes the world, the network looks more like the server world. When you have the server role, that means you can do a lot more with it. So we brought in the IoT, AI, on, and v AR, VR, Intel sports team. We have uh, autonomous driving, connected car. A lot of things started coming together. It's, to us, it's way more than just the device and the network. It's about what you enable in terms of the use cases and, and how do you metamorphosize from this from a technology to a market? And that's what I've been personally spending a lot of time and I know a lot of my colleagues have. As, as you say, um, there are a lot of different technologies that make up 5G. It's expanding the ecosystem. There's more players coming in and it's also piquing the interest of the, the open source community as well. Very much so, very much so. And, and if you think about the way that we do telco, everything is dictated by 2GPP. The minute you step into the world of server, you have a lot of interesting uh, ideas that come in, it, which is not fully binded by 2GPP. There's a lot of things coming on top of it. Open source becomes such an important element mm -hmm. to for innovation and for the community to really come in. So for example, uh, we, we had just announced a joining the Acrano project. The Acrano project is looking at the edge, how to innovate around the edge. We also announced we're gonna contribute our edge SDK into it. So that's another step we're really looking at how to expand the ecosystem from this very strictly communication to embrace a wide variety of IT-centric model. Because this whole concept of, of, of the edge or, or or network nodes <coughs> seems to it seems to be ex expanding the, um, the possibilities of, of telecoms and whole architecture from central offices becoming data centers. There's, there's a whole architectural will change, all, all focused around the potential of the edge. Yeah, like we in fact um, a month ago in Austin we announced uh, NGC or next generation central office. It's just moving this whole hyperscale cloud will further out into the network, which really goes very well hand in hand with this whole concept of Mac that you and I talked about before. So you have Mac on on-prem, really closing at the base station side, and then you have this NGCO, next generation uh, central office. We also announced uh, universal CPE. So that became another on-prem, uh, but for the wireline side, fixed side. So, you, so really truly this whole Mac stands for multiple access. So now you have wireless, wireline, all the way spread out into the uh, the NGCO. So you, you, it, this has truly become a distributed cloud. Really, 5G enables a telco to become a web scale company, if we've done this right.
if we truly can move 5G from a technology to the market, then we, we got to take that step. And as you alluded to earlier, it's about the use cases, it's about applying this, and when we talk about 5G, we talk about vertical industries a yeah. lot. Um, you've been talking here at 5G World about the whole issue of liability when it comes to 5G within certain industries. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, if yesterday I was at a GSA workshop and I talked about that, which actually started a lot of conversation mm. afterwards. Um, when we looked at it, so if you look, if your end user from a wireless tend to be a consumer, so the operator, the service provider owns that, right? Something goes wrong, it's, re your, it's your one on one relationship with a the consumer, there may be some regulatory issue. But now, if you say this is going to a factory, what happens? Something, maybe a network's down, you could probably impact a production line cost. Maybe production line goes down, God forbid there's some injuries. So the liability shifted. So if you're the licensed spectrum holder, what is your role versus a factory owner who ultimately are the, owns the liability? Because that's his or her factory. So that becomes much. So in fact, afterwards we had a several discussion, including with uh, one of the major service operator here in UK, and we talked about the boundary. I think this is something the industry together have to tackle. You know, what, what's the role when, when I start serving a factory, an airline, an airport? You, you start taking a lot more of the business in your hands, not just somebody not able to browse the internet. So, so as we head towards implementation, as you say, there's still a lot of issues that we've got to address within the industry, and hopefully in the coming months we shall do so. But for now, yeah. Caroline, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.